Hello, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I'm your host today, Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, today we're going to take just a few minutes and talk about Washington's safe storage laws. I get a lot of questions from folks calling into Washington Gun Law, asking questions about, you know, how do I how do I need to store my firearms? Where do I need? Do I need to keep it in a lockbox? Do I need to keep it unloaded? And all sorts of questions related to how does a firearm need to be stored while in the home? And as many of you probably know, especially you lawful and responsible gun owners out there, Initiative 1639 back in 2018 significantly changed some of the laws as it relates to safe storage. And so today, let's spend a few minutes getting you up to speed on what's really required of you by Washington's safe storage laws. Well, as some of you may recall, back in 2018, the citizens of the state of Washington passed Initiative 1639. Uh, that was passed in November of 2018. It became effective July 1st, 2019. And amongst the litany of provisions and restrictions that came in that legislative uh, package was some safe storage provisions, which we're going to focus on today. Now, as some of you who maybe have recently uh, purchased a firearm may have realized two things when you were at your FFL. One, you may have noticed the sign, which is very prominently displayed. Uh, that sign would have read as follows. Warning, you may face criminal prosecution if you store or leave an unsecured firearm where a person who is prohibited from possessing firearms can and does obtain possession. And one of the reasons that you are seeing those signs prominently displayed at every FFL in the state of Washington is because Initiative 1639, in fact, passed legislation which requires those signs to be prominently displayed at all gun stores. For those of you who have also purchased a firearm since 1639's passage, you will also realize that many times the firearms dealer will in fact offer you the sale of a trigger lock or some other secure storage device, a safe or something similar to that. They're doing that because that also is required by law. Now, one of the many provisions to flow from Initiative 1639, which relates to safe storage of a firearms, was the creation of a new statute, RCW 9.41.360, also referred to as the unsafe storage of a firearm statute. That statute reads as follows. A person who stores or leaves a firearm in a location where the person knows or reasonably should know that a prohibited person may gain access to the firearm, one, is guilty of community endangerment due to unsafe storage of a firearm in the first degree if a prohibited person obtains access and possession of the firearm and causes personal injury or death with the firearm, or B, is guilty of community endangerment due to unsafe storage of a firearm in the second degree if a prohibited person obtains access and possession of the firearm and one causes the firearm to discharge two carries exhibits or displays the firearm in a public place in a manner that either manifests an intent to intimidate another or that warrants alarm for the safety of other persons or three uses the firearm in the commission of a crime so the most significant part of 1639 that's pertinent to our discussion here today was, of course, the creation of RCW 9.41.360 because it creates two new levels of crimes that a firearm owner could be subjected to. Community endangerment in the first degree, that is where the firearm is unlawfully obtained and then used to injure or worse yet kill somebody, is a class C felony, which means you could be punished by up to five years in prison and a $10,000 fine. Community endangerment in the second degree where a person gains unauthorized access to the firearm and either discharges it, uses it in the commission of the crime or displays it in a way which is deemed unlawful and threatening, uh, that's a gross misdemeanor punishable by up to one year in jail and a $5,000 fine. Now, there are some exceptions to RCW 9.41.360, and it's important to go over those so that you understand those as well. The statute specifically states that it does not apply, one, in an instance where the firearm was in a secure gun storage or secured with a trigger lock or similar device that is designed to prevent unauthorized use or discharge of the firearm. The statute also says in the case of a person who is prohibited only on the basis of their age, 
access to the firearm with lawful permission of the prohibited person's parent or guardian in accordance with RCW 9.41.042 is not prohibited by the law. The statute also does not apply if the prohibited person obtains or obtains and discharges the firearm in a lawful act of self-defense. Perhaps the most important exception is subsection 3D, which reads that the prohibited person's access to the firearm was obtained as a result of an unlawful entry, provided that the un unauthorized access or theft of the firearm is reported to a local law enforcement agency in the jurisdiction in which the unauthorized access or theft occurred within five days of the time the victim of the unlawful entry knew or reasonably should have known that the firearm had been taken. So this is a really important safe haven in this law. If you realize that a person, an unauthorized person has gained access to your firearm, you must report that within five days to your local police department. If you do so, and then that firearm is later used in some unlawful manner, you in all likelihood have absolved yourself of any criminal liability. So does all of this mean that you have to store your firearm in a safe, in some kind of gun locker or with a trigger lock or some other type of secure storage device? Does it mean that you cannot store your firearm loaded? You can't sleep with it under your pillow if that's your thing? The answer to that question is no, the law does not prohibit or mandate how you store your firearm. But the law does clearly state that if you store your firearm in certain fashions in which an unauthorized person can gain access and you do nothing about it, you can subject yourself to criminal liability. And the purpose of the signs at the gun store is to put you on notice at that particular moment. But let it be clear that this law does not mandate any type of actual safe storage for any firearm owner. But part of being that lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about here all the time at Washington Gun Law, is not only knowing what you have the right to do, but also knowing what you should do in each and every situation. And so therefore, you have to really judge and assess what is the best storage for you in your particular home environment. If you have young children, firearms should certainly not be left in an unsecured area. If you live in a more dangerous neighborhood, you or a area in which there appears to be more property crime or break-ins, you may want to have that firearm more easily accessible to you during night, nighttime hours than perhaps if you live in a gated community or a very secured building or in an area that doesn't have particularly high crime. But at the end of the day, you have the right, you have the Second Amendment right to defend yourself as you see fit and to possess your firearm and store them as you see fit. But let us not forget that it is a right that comes with great responsibility. And so therefore we recommend that you carefully assess each situation and determine what is the best safe storage method based upon your living environment, who are you living with and where are you living at? Well, hey, listen, uh, hopefully that answers a lot of your questions about Washington safe storage laws. If you have any other questions about this or any other issue related to firearms or your Second Amendment rights here in the state of Washington, don't hesitate. You can always contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com. You can email me directly at William at WashingtonGunLaw.com, or you can always call us directly at 425-765-0487. Listen, part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner like we preach here at Washington Gun Law is knowing what the law is and how it applies to you in each and every instance that you may find yourself in. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.